Okay, so we're going to continue talking about how to solve radi radical equations today. So if you remember last Friday, we talked through the process that you want to isolate the radical. Okay, then you want to get rid of the radical, and then you solve for x and check your solutions to see if you have any extraneous solutions. Okay, so we're going to continue with that today, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do a problem where we have more than one radical in the problem. So... We got that. Square root of x plus 10 equals 5 minus the square root of 3 minus x. We want to solve for x. No, you leave them on separate sides here. Well, then how do you isolate them? We're going to talk about that here in a second. No, no. So, Jim asks a good question. Our first step is always isolate a radical. So how do we isolate a radical if there's a radical on both sides? Well, what you do is you isolate one of them, get rid of that one, and then you isolate the other one and get rid of that one. So you do it in a two-step process. So if I look... The left side, square root of x plus 10, is already isolated. So we're just going to get rid of that radical first. And how do I get rid of a square root? Square. So we're going to square both sides. So the left side, the square and the square root cancel out. So I just have x plus 10. The right side is a binomial square. So what do I have to do if I have a binomial or two terms squared? FOIL. So I have five times five, 25, minus five square root of three minus x, minus five square root of three minus x, plus three minus, or three, oops, plus x. 3 minus x. No, because the these are both negative. So you so do plus negative 5. No. So you do first outer, inner, last. That's what we get. What? Which one? Is it plus 3 minus x? This? No, because it's square root times square root, so that'll cancel. Now, we got to try and simplify that mess on the right side. So if we do that, I've got x plus 10 equals, well, I've got 25 plus 3, so that's 28. Negative 5 square root 3 minus x, and negative 5, that's negative 10 square root of 3 minus x. And then I've still got a minus x over there. Okay. Now, as we talked about, we've simplified as much as we can on the right side. Plus. So now we want to try and isolate that radical again. So what I need to do is move everything away from that radical. So I'm going to subtract 28 and add x. Add x, subtract 28. 28's cancel, x is cancel. x plus x is 2x. 10 minus 28 is negative 18. And I've got negative 10 square root of 3 minus x. <laughs> yep. Now I have to move the 10. And it's multiplied, so I have to divide by 10. So I've got what do I have 
negative one fifth x my, or plus 1.8 equals the square root of 3 minus x. 1.8 is just 18 divided by 10. Is that 0.8? 1.8. Where? No, but it is. Because it's negative 10. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Thing. Now, I now have to get that radical by itself. Isn't it, is that a fifth? That's a fifth. That's a square both. So I'm going to square both sides. So I get a square both sides. Right side again simplifies nicely. Three minus sets. The left side again I have to FOIL. So I got negative one fifth times x times negative one fifth x. That's one twenty fifth x squared. Oh. And now the numbers get ugly. One point eight squared. Now they get ugly. Okay. They weren't that bad before. Outside, 1.8 divided by 5.36. So I got negative 0.36x. By doing outside, if I do inside, I also get negative 0.36x plus 1.8 times 1.8. 3.24. Equals 3 minus x. Okay? Now i got to get everything to one side. So I've got 1 25th x squared. That's negative 0.36. And negative 0.36 is negative 0.72. Then I add an x to that, so I got 1 minus 0.72. It's positive 0.28x. How? How? There's no way. Oh, so you're adding the x. Negative 0.36x and negative 0.36x is negative 0.72x. And then you add an x. Then I add 1x to oh, that, okay. and I get 0.28x. And then I subtract 3 from both sides. I get plus 0.24 equals zero. That's black out. Okay, so that's kind of an ugly... We gotta solve for x though. So, we now have to solve this. Okay? We're gonna want to use quadratic here because AC is gonna be really, really ugly. So we're going to take 125th to a decimal. It's 0 0.04. Okay, so we got that. So A is 0 0.04, B is 0.28, C is 0.24. Okay, so I've now got, so 0.04, B is 0.28, C is 0.24. Going to plug in, so i got opposite of B, plus and minus, B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A plus And then, I just got to work that out. What's 0.28 squared? Anybody have their calculator? No? No idea. 0784. 0 0.0784 minus. Yes, this is all one problem. Point. 0384 all over 0 0.08 it's, if you notice here though it's going to work out pretty nicely here so I got negative 0.28 plus and minus 
So I've got 0 0.0784 minus 0 0.0384, which is 0 0.04. And if I do the square root of 0 0.04, what do I get? So it's either negative 32 or negative 36 over. Right? So I get 0.02. It's not? It's point two. Point two? Sorry. Point two. So then my two answers. I always forget to take the square root back. My two answers here, I've got negative point two eight plus point two divided by point zero eight. I also have negative point two eight minus point two all over point oh eight. So if I add this, I get negative 0 0.08 over 0 0.08, which is negative 1. And over here, I get negative 0 0.48 divided by 0 0.08, which is negative 6. So negative 6 and negative 1 are our answers. Yeah, it won't be that. Oh, and now, what? Now, we've got two answers, but am I done? I hope so. You got to check them. So you got to plug them both back in. So I got square root of x plus 10, 5 minus 3 minus x. So let's double check here. So if I plug in negative 1, Square root of 9, 5 minus square root of 4. So 3 equals 5 minus 2, 3 equals 3. So negative 1 is correct. Now negative 6. Negative 6 plus 10. 5 minus 3 minus negative 6. 5 minus... Square root of 9, so 2 equals 5 minus 3, 2 equals 2. So in this case, both solutions are correct. Okay. Okay. We're going to do one more with the radical on both sides. Just make sure we have that down. It won't be quite as ugly. I got lost. Let's try to do So there won't be that long. Yeah. 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 Not like the last one. Are we All right. This one by ourselves? Can we try by ourselves? First? Yeah, go ahead and try this on your own. Follow the process, see if you can do it. Minus seven, so it'd be you do first times first and get x plus two. The outsides would just be negative seven square root x plus two and negative seven square root x plus two, and then you just do seven times seven. Wait, so the first, so it's x plus two. Yep, that's the first. Well, that's what you get by doing square root of x plus two. Oh, so if I'm following this, 
<laughs> you have first times first, x plus two. Outside, square root of seven, or square root of x plus two times negative seven is negative seven square root x plus two. Number with number, we radical with radical. Yeah. No. That's the foil on the website. Because it's number with number, radical with radical. This, there's number with number, the one out front, then radical with no radical, so it's just copied. Outside and then inside. Because remember, it's too fat. And then you're supposed to get to the yeah, and we'll we'll write it out later. Okay. See? No, no, Kyle. That was like two minutes. Yeah, you can't give up on the screen. Mr. Kyle, after that, you can need to start. Just have to let us do it. You can combine stuff, yeah. So I can put the two over here. I got rid of it. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, the on this side, because the X and the X are canceled, yes. Yep. All right, I'll give you about two more minutes. Two more minutes. All right, I think, can you look at this one? I was wondering why you were getting such big numbers. I will. So I got to divide. At least one. Or I have to add four to the other side. This is where I'm trying to get not I four times Uh, 
All right, here we go. Okay, so we look at this. Is, is one of my radicals isolated? Yes. Yeah, the right side. So we're going to square both sides, right? Okay. So the right side becomes x plus 9. I think for some of you, you need to get in the habit of writing this out. Because some of you are missing terms when you're trying to FOIL without writing both terms out. So if I do square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2, that's just x plus 2. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Then I do the outside. Square root of x plus 2 times negative 7. This is why we spent all that time doing radicals the first couple weeks of school. Number with number, radical with radical. So this just becomes negative 7 square root x plus 2. Negative 7 multiplies by that imaginary 1 out front. There's no other radical for it, square root of x plus 2 to multiply by, so it's just copied down. Then we do the same thing on the left, or for the inside, and then last is 49. Okay? And if I write it out all the way, that's what I get if I square both sides. Now I look to see what can I combine and cancel. What can I combine and cancel? Well, I'm going to cancel the x's right away. I've got an x on both sides. Those can cancel. Okay? I'm going to subtract 9 over, and I get 2 plus 49 is 51, 51 minus 9 42. is 42. And negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14. Okay, so I got that. Isolate. Now I want to isolate the radical on the left. So I subtract 42. Uh, I probably shouldn't have. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have moved the 42 over. I should have, or the 9 over. I should have moved everything away from it. But now divide. So I get square root of x plus 2 equals 3. Square both sides. X equals 7. Now, what do I got to do here? Check it. How many of you remember to check it? I did. So I got three minus seven equals four. Is negative four equal to positive four? Does not work. And since 7 was my only answer, if that is an extraneous solution, what does that mean for the problem? It's a no solution problem, correct. All that work for a no solution, yes. Okay. Good. That's not okay. Oh, yeah. That's going to give you, though. Like, I want to be like, same solution as you, Danny. Okay. Now. Okay. 
Here we go. Are we doing this one by ourselves? No. Now we're going to do the same type of thing, but instead of equations, it's now going to be a inequality. The only thing that adds is now once you find your answer, you have to graph it on a number line. Oh, oh. No. I don't like this. And then you have to like put the sides on Yep. Oh, and you need to have a blacking circle or just an open circle. <laughs> yep. Oh. Oh. Of course they have. Okay. Here we go. Now, the steps, ladies, gentlemen. The steps are the exact same. Except we have to graph at the end. And we have an inequality sign. So, for first step is to get rid of the radical. So I look, radical is already by itself, so I just square both sides. We get 4x plus 5 is less than or equal to 100. Just by squaring both sides, that's a pretty straightforward approach. Can you just get rid of five? Like, leave that out of the other side. Now, I'm going to, no, subtract five. 4x is less than or equal to 95. Divide by four. It's 23.75. Thank you. x is less than or equal to 27.75. That's all we need to do. Now, what other thing do we have to consider? What can't radicals be? They can be decimals, but what can I have this be underneath there? Negative. Negative. So whenever you have a radical, you also have to take the discriminant and set that greater than or equal to zero. <laughs> because again, you cannot have negative numbers under a radical and graph them. Discriminant is what's underneath. From, if you remember from, we can't have it be negative, ever. So the discriminant is? The 4x plus 5. So negative 5 is like negative 1 and a quarter. Right. So I get 4x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Divide by negative 4. So x has to be greater than. I'm sorry, positive 4. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1.25. So now I write my solution, negative 1.25 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 23.75. So now what we need to do is test a number in between there. Two. So let's test zero. No, nope, we're going with the solid 10. Okay? So when you're doing this, Let's pick a number that works out, though. Like, honestly. What are you doing? Let's do one. No, one. Yeah, one works. Let's do one. It's nine. Nine squared. One does work. Okay. So we're going to test a number in between there. So if we do one, that's square to nine, which is three. Is three less than or equal to ten? Is that true? Yeah. That's true. Okay. Now, when you are checking this, though, you also have to check check numbers outside of that range to make sure your solution is the correct range. So we're going to check 25 and we'll check negative 2. So if I plug 25 in, it's 105. Is the square root of 105 less than or equal to 10? It has to be because 100. Squared, it has to be greater than 10, right? So this is false. So that tells us our solution is correct 
on the upper end. Then if we do negative 2, negative 8 plus 5, square root of negative 3 is not allowed, so that works as well. That is also false. So because the only area that works is in between our solutions, that tells us we have the correct solutions. You did it, guys. So then, thank you, Thayer, we do have to graph that solution set. So, number line, negative 1.25, 23.75, 23.75, Circle both those numbers. It's equal to, so those are both closed circles on the interval. And then we shade in between. And that's it. Done for the day. Okay? So your homework for this section. I'm just going to do the homework on this stage. Are we going to have more notes for this? Uh, you shake your... No, no more notes. No. Okay, then Ms. Burridge can shake your Okay, this is just precursoring. This is the last section we are doing in this chapter. So that means we have a chapter test this week. So tomorrow, okay, tomorrow you are going to get the review assignment, the practice test. Wednesday and Thursday will be review slash work days on this assignment and the practice test. And then the test will be on Friday. Okay?